Okay guys, we're going to be moving on today to actually doing the hero select part of this. So we've actually coded in three different heroes here at the top and now what we've got to do is actually program the part of this which will allow us to select a different hero depending on what we do. Because obviously our different heroes have got different attributes so we want to be able to play as different people. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start off by defining a function and that's going to be called hero select like this. And what this does is it says that anything which is underneath here, indented here, is basically kind of like a little mini program. I call them functions in Python. And I can call this function whenever I need it, instead of putting all the code back in whenever it needs to happen. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. So, once I've defined hero select, um, I basically need to start saying what is going to happen um, when this runs. So, I'll print that statement. So, select your hero. And then I need to actually capture what the user puts. So what I'm going to do is put an input statement here. So an input statement lets will stop the code when it gets to this point and it will allow the user to type something. So I'm going to type in here um, what I want to come up in the menu. So all I want now is one warrior. Um, I'll explain this slash end in a second as well. Two. My second character is a wizard, so I'm going to type wizard here. Or three, elf is my other character. So you might have slightly different characters to me, so you may put in different things. So why am I putting these slash ends in? Well, every time I put a slash n in, in Python, um, oh, I've actually put them all in the wrong way around. Make sure you put them the right way around, they need to go this way. So every time you put a slash n in, in Python, it will actually create a new line for you, and you'll see that in a second. So I don't want all this stuff on the same line. I can't press enter in here, because it's going to put me down here, and it's going to affect the actual code. So if I write slash n, that is the same as saying new line. Okay, so this will actually appear underneath here, and this will appear underneath here. So there's my input statement to start. And um, now I need to actually do the selection part of it. So if my user's selection is the same as one, so let's actually just go through this statement very quickly before we move on. This variable here is the variable which is above it. When they type in one, two, or three, it gets saved into here. And what I'm saying is if whatever is saved in here is equal to one, then do the following. Now put speech marks around the one because when they type in the number one it's actually being interpreted as a letter so we're going to do speech marks around it but we'll get to data types and things like that a little bit later. So if they've typed in one what I want to do is I want to set a variable called character and I want to set it to warrior. Exactly written exactly the same as this here. So if there is a capital at the beginning I'd need to do a capital if it's all lowercase, it all needs to be lowercase. So it needs to appear exactly like this. So if they select one, that is going to be a warrior. And basically what I'm saying is this character is going to this character variable is going to look up here at this class mm -hmm. and inherit all of these attributes. You'll see it in more detail in a second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to print out the character's attributes for the player to say. So I'm going to say you have selected the warrior. These are their stats or attributes, whatever. So these are basically like their health and all the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out their health by doing this. So their health their health is character dot health. Now I'll explain this in more detail in a sec. It's the first time I've actually um, collected an attribute from a class above. There's a couple of things in here which make it um, not straightforward as beforehand. So um, what I've done here 
is if I just had one character, I would be able to just use warrior.health and then that would be that. But because there's a number of different characters, I actually need to set this variable here to whatever character they've selected. And then when I reference that, that attribute, I do it like this. I type in character because it's this variable here, which equals whatever they've selected, then dot, and then whatever attributes they're trying to actually, we're trying to show them. So character.health in this situation is going to return the value 150, because there's the health there. Okay? Like I say, I could do the same by doing warrior.health, but later on, when I've selected other characters, it wouldn't work, because I've got a, a range of different characters to select from. So this here, by just doing character, which is the class name now, dot health, which is the attributes, I can actually get the attribute I need. And you'll be able to get all of these attributes by doing exactly the same thing. So, do exactly the same thing again. Print, and this is now strength. There's a couple of things about formatting this as well. We see there's a close speech mark, then a, a comma, and then I write in no, uh, no spaces or anything like that when I'm actually collecting that attribute. Write it in exactly like that. So in this print statement, I can't actually have a string and a class or variable in the same thing unless it's separated by a comma. So remember that comma. Print and then defense. So there it all is, ready to go. And the last thing I need to do is return the details which I've just selected. So I'm going to return character. Why is it important to do this? Well, in a function, um, what my player is doing here is kind of in its own little um, in its own little program, its own little world. So in order to be able to use anything that my um, user actually does, I need to make sure at the end of it I return it. So here in the hero select, once they've selected their hero, so here's where the actual selection, well, here's where the selection occurs, but this is where we assign their hero to this character variable. We need to be able to use that variable in other parts of the program. So we return character. And we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. Now, on to the next one. So we have an if statement and after an if statement follows an elif statement, it means else if. So if we have more than three um, different characters, we will do um, a range of elif statements. And we'll show you this in a second here. So elif selection again now oh, um, is equal to the number two. So what happens if they select two? Well, for me, they are actually selecting the wizard, because that's my second class. Your class might be different, so you need to make sure you change it, but make sure it's spelled exactly as here. Same lowercase, uppercase. And I do exactly the same as before. So my character equals wizard. And now, because I've assigned that to, because I've actually assigned wizards to character, I can use all of these, because these are going to be exactly the same, but now they're just going to pull from the wizard set of stats instead of the warrior. I'll show you this running in a second. So I'll do a print. You have selected the wizard. These are their stats. And then again, in order to use this part of it here, I need to return the character. So I now need to do another elif statement. So for every character after the initial if statement, we do elif statements. So if you've got six characters, you're going to be doing this all the way up to your 
uh, six different elif statements here. So in this case, if they select three, character for me is going to equal elf. And I follow the exact same procedure. So if you pause the video now, you can do just that. So you can carry on coding your third option here and then go on to do your fourth option by doing exactly the same thing here with elif selection equals equals four and fifth and sixth and so on. Okay, so if you pause the video now, you can do that and then we'll get on to the final part of this. Okay, so you should have finished programming all of your different heroes that you can choose from. Um, and like I said, if you have more than three, you just carry on with the elif selection equals equals four, and then you carry on exactly the same as before. So what, is, what do we do now? Well, unfortunately, um, people playing your game are not only going to put in one, two, or three. They may end up making a mistake, and if we don't do this last bit, that could crash your game. So we need to do what we call an else statement. Um, these are important statements in Python. Um, if, elif, and else. And they should always be set out like this. So you have a start of an if. You can have as many elifs as you want in the middle. But it always ends with an else. And we see the way it's indented underneath each one. And it goes back, indent, and it goes back. It's very formal, the way it's all indented. If yours doesn't look like that now, just take a minute to make sure that, you, um, that you've indented it properly. If yours is a little bit all over the place, the best thing to do is to keep pressing backspace until you get it on the same line as a piece of code which is in the right place. Press enter and it will put it in the correct place for you. Okay, a bit of a tip there. So for everything else basically, so if they put in a incorrect um, letter or they put in a wrong number, we're going to just do a print statement saying that they've got it wrong. So only press, only put press one, two, or three. So for me, it's only one, two, or three. Hmm. Um, what I want to do now is I want to give them another go at actually typing in the correct, um, the correct hero that they want. So I need to rerun this function. And all I need to do is I just need to recall it here. So if I underneath here, I just type the name of the function, hero select bracket bracket like that. This will actually recall the function for me and it will start the whole thing again for them. So let's actually have a look at this and see if it works. So first things first, we're going to test to see if there's any errors in the code and then we're going to test it to see if it works. So if we run it first of all, there we go. So nothing's come up, which is good. It means there's no errors in the code. Now we actually need to um, test to see if the thing actually works. So in order to test it, Underneath everything, and we're going to delete this in a minute because it's not going to be there for our actual game. So underneath everything, and make sure you're right back to the wall. You can type the name of the, the function, which is hero select bracket bracket. And what this will do, this will actually call this whole thing, and then it will go on from here. So if we run it again, here we go. So it's actually Ask me first of all, select your hero, what do you want? Okay, let's start with the first one here. So I selected one, it's come up with all of my stats for me, 150, 10, 10, 1. And I've just checked to make sure those are the right stats. 150, 10, 10, 1. I know it's pulling the correct class information for me. So let's run it again and see if it's working for the other ones. So try again, two. And again, these are different stats because this is now pulling from these stats here this class stats. And the final would be the elf. Let's run that. And you see again, another set of stats. So we've got all three sets of stats working properly. And that means that when we go into the game, we'll have three different um, heroes, which can actually do sort of attack and defend in three different ways. Now the last thing to do here is run the module again and just check to make sure that if I put something else in. So if I make a mistake, press enter, it actually comes up, I only put one, two, three, select your hero. So it will not allow me to move past this unless I just put in one, two, or three. Okay, and as soon as I do, it runs the game. So what I want you to do now, please, is you have had the opportunity to code a number of different 
uh, hero classes, you should now have done the selection for those. If you want to put in more classes and more selection possibilities here, you can do that. Um, or move on to the next thing, which is actually going to be defining the loot drops and things like that. Okay.